All right, so let's work on just the basics here, completing a stoichiometry table. The first one is going to be pretty easy. The next one's a little more complicated. I am going to uh, go through this quickly because my assumption is that you can calculate molar masses and things like that. I just want to give you a, a quick uh, overview of the big picture. So if you are struggling, <clears throat> feel free to pause it, rewind a little bit, try to figure out where I got certain numbers if it's not right away clear to you. Uh, and then feel free to ask me in class if you need to. Okay, <clears throat> first thing we have to do is balance our equation. We've got one sodium, one sodium. We've got two chlorines, only one chlorine. You can't start with two and only end with one. So we're going to end with two sodium chlorides. So we have an NaCl and another NaCl. So that means we're going to use up both chlorines. That's good, but we also need to start with two sodiums. Now, in terms of uh, the stoichiometry table, you're going to fill in basically parts of your balanced equation in the spots below. Just like that. Then you look at how many moles you have. Moles are easy because all you have to do is look at the coefficient. Two, one mole of that, and two moles of that. Now, a common uh, question kids have is they see this Cl2 and they say, well, we got two chlorines. Why don't I put a two here? And the answer is you just look at the moles. So there's one mole of these guys that are connected. Okay, doesn't matter how many there are. You just say that there's, you'll take that in consideration when you do the mass, but in terms of how many moles, you just say there's one of these, one mole of those, um, or one mole of these, or two moles of these. You don't have to break them apart and say how many individual parts. Like if I said, uh, how many bikes do you have? If I told you you have 10 wheels, you know that there's two wheels per bike, so you have five bikes. Uh, you wouldn't say, oh, I have 10 bikes, just because you have two wheels. All right, mass. Mass, we have to look at the moles and multiply it by what one weighs. So we look on the periodic table and say one mole weighs 23.0 grams for sodium. And we have two moles, so two times 23 is 46.0 grams. Chlorine, one set of Cl2 weighs 35.5 times 2. That's 71.0 grams. We only have one mole, so it's just 71.0. And finally, one sodium chloride. If you add up a sodium at 23.0 and a chlorine at 35.5, you get 58.5. That's one sodium chloride, but you have a two, so you have to distribute it. Two times that is 117.0 grams. If you want to double check yourself, and I highly recommend this, add all of your reactants up, they're going to equal all of your products. So if you add the 46 plus the 71, Guess what you should equal? 117. So if I were you, and I was doing this on a quiz or a test where it's really, really important to get this table right, then I would double check myself before I move on. All right, volume. Volume is only for a gas. If you want the volume of a liquid or a solid, then you just have to do uh, water displacement or throw it in a graduated cylinder or length times width times height or any other uh, geometric formula that you would use if it's a somewhat regular shape. But we're going to cheat. We're going to say that we're only going to do gases, and if it's a mole of a gas, it's going to take up 22.4 liters of space at STP. And we'll talk about what happens when those conditions change later on in the year. But right now, you look and say, well, sodium, it's not a gas, so I don't have to worry about it. Chlorine is a gas, and I have one mole. So if I have one mole, it's 22.4 liters. Sulfur, not a gas. I'm sorry, sodium chloride not a gas. We see a little S there for solid, so we cross that off. So here's your table filled out. Again, this is a very simple basic table. Now let's try a little more complicated one. Again, you could print out this handout if you want, and you could try them and then double check your answers as you're watching the video. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> let's balance it. One aluminum, two aluminums. Right away I put a two there. I got three sets of nitrate in one molecule. Ignore that two for a minute three sets of nitrate in one molecule, but I have two molecules. So it's nitrate, 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 another nitrate, nitrate, nitrate. So that's six nitrates. So I look over here, I need six nitrates. So I put a big six in front. Then I have six sodiums. And over here I want six sodiums. So I do three sets of two, two, and two. There's six. Then that's three sets of sulfate, three sets of sulfate. So we're all balanced with a two Al and O3. Three, a three and a two SO4, 
Al2, SO4, 3, and then finally 6, Na, NO3. So my moles, real easy, just copy your coefficients. 2, 3, 1, 6. Masses. So here we go, we've got aluminum nitrate. Figure out what one aluminum nitrate weighs, and then multiply it by 2 afterwards. So for nitrate itself, nitrate is 14, oxygen is going to be 16 times 3. Hi. 16 times 3. There's my little guy if you hear him. Um, so anyways, one nitrate turns into 62 grams. And then I've got three of them. So 62 times 3 is 186. That's just for my three nitrates. And then my aluminum is going to be 27 grams. So 27 plus 186 equals 213. So that's the mass of one of these guys. But I've got two of them. So I'm going to double that, and I'm going to get 426.0 grams. The next one, we've got the sodium sulfate here. Na2SO4. So see what one of them weighs. Sodium is 23.0 times 2. So that's 46.0. Sulfur 32.1 and oxygen 16.0 times 4. So that's 64. So I add these guys up together and that comes out to 142.1. That's what one of them weighs. Then I multiply it by 3 and I come up with 426.3 yet again. Alright, aluminum sulfate. I got Al2 and then SO4. Three. So what you can do here is figure out how much one sulfate one weighs. One sulfate is 96.1. You've got three of them. So three of them is going to come out to 288.3 plus 27 times 2. That's 54. So all of this added together, that's the mass of one. And the good thing is I only need one. So it's going to be 342.3 grams. And then finally, NaNO3. There's NaNO3. I add up my nitrate. Nitrate comes out to 62. I add up my sodium, or figure out what my sodium is, 23. Add the two up together. And then I multiply this mess times 6, because I have 6 of them. And it comes out to a grand total of 510. Now that's a lot of work. There's also a lot of room for error. So before I do anything else, I'm going to take my two reactants, I'm going to add them together, see what I get, and then I'm going to take my two products, add them together and see what I get, and make sure that what I start with is equal to what I end with. If they are, then I'm, it's not guaranteed, but I'm probably on the right path. Now, I get to volume. Volume of gases. Aqueous solution, aqueous solution, aqueous solution, and aqueous solution. So I don't need to do any of these things. If I did, I don't, because they're all uh, aqueous solutions, none of them are gases. But if I did, let's pretend this says gas, this says gas, gas, and gas. I would say I got 2 moles, 2 times 22.4 is 44.8. 3 times uh, 22.4 is 67.2. 1 mole would just be 22.4, and then 6 times 22.4, whatever that comes out to. So if they were gases, I would just look at how many moles I have and multiply it by 22.4 liters, and then that tells me how many liters I would have for that particular gas. Okay? All right, so we're going to be using this table quite a bit to do a lot of stoichiometry, which is coming up next.